What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over Jason Statham's private supercar collection. If this is your first time on the channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button down below to see more car collections. And while you're at it, why don't you comment down below someone else that you would like us to see us cover and we'll be taking the person who's the most recurring for next week's video. But let's get straight into it with Jason Statham. <laughs> You guys probably know him from the countless action movies that he's made over the years. He has a net worth estimated at around $90 million. So he can easily afford to buy quite a few cool cars. One of the first he was ever spotted in was an Audi RS6. Around a 2004 model, the Audi RS6, with a V8 producing around 444 brake horsepower. Fast saloon, most of the time you'd see these in station wagon form but he went for a saloon. You've seen driving this one around in the States. Clearly the fast Audi saloons are something that he quite likes. He moved up from the RS6 to the S8. So in the Audi lineup, the A8 basis model line is one step up from the A6 model line. Arguably the S8 is not quite as sporty, not quite as sort of special as an RS6. So RS is kind of the really hardcore uh, line and versions of Audis, whereas S is kind of what's in between the normal A's and the RS's. So he had an S8 as well. But there were two more Audis. If you're talking fast Audis, you have to, of course, talk about the Audi R8. He owned a white Audi R8 V8. This is a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. Not sure, you can't tell from the photos if it's an Artronic because it is a first generation Audi R8, it would be what's called an Artronic gearbox, which is a single clutch gearbox. They then updated that with a facelift to an S-Tronic, a double clutch, and then now today, the Audi R8 is no longer available with a V8. Very cool looking car, but he had to upgrade as soon as they came out with the 5.2 liter V10 version. Same chassis, same basic car, but they ripped a V10 out of Lamborghini and stuck it in the back of an R8. Rather than having it in white this time, he got it in black. Sticking to German cars and sticking to the fast saloon kind of theme, he's also recently been spotted driving in Mercedes S63 AMG. Awesome fast wagon, kind of top of the range. Mercedes S-Class is the benchmark as far as kind of four-door saloon limousine, extremely comfortable, extremely safe, and the S63 is the most brutal and the fastest version of this car. With a twin turbocharged V8, pushes out a ton of horsepower, a ton of torque, but whilst not sacrificing any of the interior luxuries. You can have a fridge in the back, you can have reclined seats in the back, you have massage seats in the front and in the back. It's an absolute beast and in this blacked out spec, it looks really cool. So he seems to definitely have a thing for the fast German saloon cars. But he also has a thing for supercars. He was seen driving around for quite a while actually in a convertible Aston Martin DBS. Not the last generation DBS, this is the one just before with a, with a V12 over six liters. These things sound awesome, naturally aspirated. So today it has since been replaced with what we call the DBS Super Legere, which also has a V12, but a twin turbocharged V12, so it doesn't sound quite as good. Aston Martin in the lineup call their convertibles the Volantes. So this is an Aston Martin DVS Volante. Finished in black, one of the most beautiful car designs I think of all time. Available with either a manual gearbox or also, like in the Audi R8, the first generation R8, a single clutch flappy panel gearbox, which, to be honest, wasn't great. British cars are also a bit of a theme. He was seen in a very, very classy red Jaguar E-Type from the late 60s. Awesome looking car, in perfect condition. Not sure if it's an original car, if it's one he just borrowed to show up to a movie premiere, or if it is his personal car, which was potentially restored. These things are flying up in value, one of the most beautiful cars, again, like the DBS. The British car makers seem to make some pretty good looking cars, don't they? Suits him and his kind of characters he's had in movies pretty well. Very classy, kind of James Bond-esque, and especially in this red spec, very, very classy. Going back to some of the modern cars, he then decided to purchase a Porsche 997 first generation GT2. Really, really, well, I mean, hard car to drive, so shows he's a proper car guy. He's obviously been associated with so many different cars in his movies, it's hard to know 
which were his actual personal ones. We believe this is one that he drives quite a bit. They call GT2s the Widowmakers because effectively they are twin turbocharged Porsche 911s. And what makes a 911 special is the fact that the engine is sat behind the rear axle all the way in the back of the car, which gives the behavior of the car historically less so in the current models, but in the older models, a little bit more unpredictable. Now, when you couple that engine layout with two turbos and then remove the four wheel drive you usually have in the turbo versions of 911s and keep them purely rear wheel drive, it becomes quite a handful. Now, that doesn't seem to scare our good old Jason who jumps off buildings and flies aeroplanes backwards and does all sorts of stuff in his movies. GT2 seems like a very fitting car. Awesome spec, white with a few little decals down the side. These again are another car that's kind of going up in value quite a bit. That generation GT2 came also in an RS version, but 997 GT2s were the last ones available in manual. So going up quite a bit in value and I think a future classic. Another car which many are saying could be a future classic is the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. Jason Statham posted with one of these on Instagram insinuating there was probably his car. Really nice gray spec. Now this is a naturally aspirated V12 Ferrari. Traditional Ferrari layout, big V12 in the front, GT cabin over the rear wheels. So you can crunch miles in these but you've still got a ton of horsepower and a beautiful sound to accompany you along some little country roads if ever you want to have a really good time. Now it's coupled to a double clutch gearbox, so it means that the gear shifts are instant and it's just a beautiful, beautiful looking car. Why could this be a future classic? Because we don't know how much longer naturally aspirated V12 Ferraris will be around for, hopefully for a while, but you never know. And if they disappear, the F12 Berlinetta and the A12 Superfast, which came after it, will probably go down in the history books. So very cool to see Jason with some real connoisseur cars. GT2, F12, DBS Volante, E-Type. Clearly really, really likes his cars. There are so many more he's been associated with because of his movies, but that we don't believe were actually ever his. That's it for Jason's car collection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to comment down below if there's anyone else you'd like to see us cover and we'll be back with another one of these videos next week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you are not already and we'll see you very soon. Cheers guys. Bye bye.